Here's something that'll keep you up at night. Right now, somewhere in a laboratory, a scientist is working on technology that could make you functionally immortal. Not in some distant sci-fi future. Not in a hundred years. Right now. And the crazy part? They're not just talking about adding a few extra years to your life. They're talking about fundamentally breaking the relationship between time and aging. Imagine celebrating your 150th birthday with the body and mind of a 50-year-old. Sound impossible? That's exactly what researchers said about splitting the atom, landing on the moon, and editing human DNA. Yet here we are. Let's start with something that sounds like pure science fiction, but is already happening. Rewriting your genetic code while you're alive. CRISPR-Cas9 has transformed from a laboratory curiosity into a precision tool that can snip out defective genes and replace them with healthy ones. Think of it as autocorrect for your DNA, except instead of fixing typos in text messages, it's correcting mutations that cause devastating diseases. In 2019, doctors used this technology to treat a patient with sickle cell anemia, a genetic disorder that had tortured them their entire life. Fast forward to December 2023, and that therapy received full FDA approval. A genetic disease that was once a life sentence is now potentially curable. But here's where it gets really interesting. Scientists aren't stopping at fixing broken genes. They're now targeting the genes responsible for aging itself. Your body has built-in mechanisms for DNA repair, immune function, and fighting inflammation. The problem? These systems degrade as you age. What if we could edit your genes to keep these systems running at peak efficiency indefinitely? Researchers are exploring exactly that, tweaking the genetic switches that control cellular repair, maintaining telomeres that protect your chromosomes, and optimizing your immune system to function like it did when you were 25. We're not just talking about preventing diseases anymore, we're talking about preventing aging at the molecular level. Now imagine this, microscopic robots swimming through your bloodstream, constantly patrolling for problems and fixing them before you even notice. Welcome to nanotechnology, where engineers are building machines smaller than a human cell. These aren't the clunky robots you're picturing. These are molecular-scale devices that can navigate your body with surgical precision. Already, nanoparticles are being used in cancer treatment, delivering chemotherapy drugs directly to tumors while leaving healthy tissue untouched. The FDA has approved treatments like Doxel, which wraps cancer-fighting drugs in nano-sized packages that zero in on cancer cells like guided missiles. But the real revolution is still coming. Future nanobots could patrol your arteries, scraping away plaque before it causes a heart attack. They could identify and repair damaged tissues cell by cell. They could hunt down infections and eliminate them at the molecular level. Picture a world where cardiovascular disease, currently the number one killer globally, becomes as rare as polio, where your body has an army of microscopic repair crews working around the clock, fixing problems before they escalate into life-threatening conditions. The global nanomedicine market hit $350 billion in 2022 and shows no signs of slowing down. The money flooding into this field tells you everything you need to know. This isn't speculation anymore. It's an arms race. Here's a question. What if damaged organs weren't a death sentence, but just an inconvenience? Regenerative medicine is turning that fantasy into reality by growing replacement organs in laboratories. The key lies in stem cells biological blank slates that can transform into any type of cell your body needs. Need a new heart? Grow one from your own cells. Damaged kidney? Same thing. While we can't yet grow a fully functioning human kidney from scratch, researchers have successfully created kidney organoids, miniature simplified kidneys that function well enough to test drugs and study disease. It's like having a practice kidney before building the real thing. And some successes have already moved from lab to patient. Bioengineered tracheas and skin grafts made from a patient's own cells have been successfully transplanted into human bodies. These aren't science experiments anymore. They're actual treatments saving actual lives. Think about what this means. The organ shortage that kills thousands of people every year waiting for transplants could simply cease to exist. Organ rejection, where the body attacks foreign tissue, becomes irrelevant when the organ is grown from your own cells. We're looking at a future where age-related organ failure is no longer terminal, but treatable. Now let's talk about the technology that's quietly revolutionizing everything, artificial intelligence. AI isn't just recommending movies or writing emails anymore. It's becoming the most powerful diagnostic tool in medical history. Machine learning systems can analyze your medical history, genetics, 
lifestyle, and family health patterns, then predict diseases years before you develop symptoms. It's like having a crystal ball that actually works, giving you time to prevent problems instead of just reacting to them. DeepMind's AlphaFold achieved something extraordinary in 2020. It figured out how to predict protein structures with unprecedented accuracy. Why does that matter? Because understanding how proteins fold and function is fundamental to understanding virtually every disease. Cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, they all involve proteins behaving badly. AlphaFold gave scientists a roadmap to understanding these diseases at their most basic level, potentially accelerating drug discovery by decades. Meanwhile, AI systems are already detecting breast cancer, with over 90% accuracy in clinical settings, often catching tumors before human doctors can spot them. The real power comes from personalization. A, I can create a unique health strategy tailored specifically to your biology, adjusting in real time as your body changes. Healthcare AI investment is projected to exceed $187 billion by 2030, and that money is buying breakthroughs at an accelerating pace. But what about monitoring your health continuously, catching problems the instant they appear? That's where wearable technology comes in, and it's evolved far beyond counting steps. Modern wearables measure heart rate variability, track sleep architecture, monitor blood oxygen, and detect early warning signs of chronic disease. The Apple Watch can perform an electrocardiogram right on your wrist, catching atrial fibrillation, a major stroke risk, before it causes catastrophic damage. Continuous glucose monitors have revolutionized diabetes management by 2023, eliminating painful finger pricks and giving patients real-time data to manage their condition. The next generation of wearables is even more ambitious. Researchers are developing devices that can detect cancer biomarkers in your bloodstream, monitor your immune system's health, and identify the earliest biochemical signatures of Alzheimer's disease. Imagine wearing a watch that warns you about health problems five years before traditional medicine would catch them. That's not futuristic speculation, that's where the technology is heading right now. Biotechnology is attacking aging from yet another angle, biological reprogramming. Scientists have discovered they can essentially reset your cells to a younger state by manipulating epigenetic markers, the chemical tags that control which genes are active. Using Yamanaka factors, researchers have successfully rejuvenated cells in laboratory experiments, making old cells behave young again. If this scales to whole organisms, to humans, we're talking about literally reversing the aging process, not slowing it down, not stopping it, reversing it. In late 2022, researchers performed the first human transfusion using lab-grown red blood cells, proving that we can now manufacture blood components from scratch. The implications are staggering. Personalized treatments for rare blood disorders, unlimited blood supply, and potentially a way to keep your entire circulatory system perpetually young. Then there's the technology that sounds most like science fiction, brain-computer interfaces. Companies like Neuralink are developing devices that create direct connections between your brain and external systems. In 2023, Neuralink received FDA approval to begin human trials, a massive milestone. The immediate applications focus on helping paralyzed patients control prosthetics or communication devices with their thoughts, but the long-term vision is far more ambitious, enhancing memory, preventing cognitive decline, and potentially backing up your consciousness itself. Imagine a world where Alzheimer's becomes impossible because your brain has technological scaffolding preventing neurons from dying, where your memories are preserved digitally, accessible forever, where cognitive decline is as obsolete as smallpox. Telemedicine might seem mundane compared to nanobots and genetic editing, but it's solving a critical problem, access. The global telemedicine market hit $87 billion by 2022 and continues exploding. What started as video consultations during the pandemic has evolved into sophisticated sophisticated remote monitoring systems that track chronic conditions in real time. Wearable devices feed data directly to doctors who can intervene at the first sign of trouble. For people in remote areas or underserved communities, telemedicine is breaking down barriers that have killed millions throughout history. Good healthcare isn't revolutionary if only wealthy people in major cities can access it. Here's the uncomfortable question nobody wants to address. What happens when these technologies actually work? Who gets access to immortality? Will it be reserved for billionaires, creating a two-tier society where the rich live forever while everyone else dies on schedule? How do we handle a planet with 10 billion people who never die? What about resources? Food, water, housing, jobs? 
The World Economic Forum released a report in 2023 emphasizing that these technologies must be distributed equitably, but we all know how that tends to work out in practice. And here's something even weirder to consider. Would people actually want to live 150 years? Would you get bored? Would society stagnate when powerful people never relinquish control? Would relationships fundamentally change when till death do us part means two centuries together? These aren't just practical questions. They're existential ones that humanity has never had to seriously contemplate before. The future of human longevity isn't coming. It's here. These technologies exist today improving rapidly, converging in ways that could fundamentally transform what it means to be human. Your grandchildren might look back at our era the way we look at the age before antibiotics, a brutal time when people died from problems that became easily fixable. The only question that remains is whether we'll navigate the ethical minefield successfully, or whether the cure for death creates problems worse than mortality itself. Either way, the experiment has already begun.